you guys just know how it goes and what order everything goes in and how to put the boat in and how to do their rods, where the rods go, where the cooler goes, where the sandwiches go inside of that cooler. And they have this all figured out and you just better stand back and watch because they're like, they're in this program and they just go for it. And they don't need to tell each other, they just have it down in order. Personality-wise, it's funny because they're very different in many ways, but when you combine the two guys, it's like this dance where somebody is always on beat. I think it was almost happenstance. You know, Rick and I have been friends for 32 years and probably fishing for 25 of those. And he's always kept a journal of our fishing exploits. And you know, just like this was January 4th, 2014. And as you see, I haven't, I, at that time, I wasn't able to learn how to turn the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the first picture that we got for that year. And so after I think about five years of fishing together, we suddenly realized that we had been fishing every month of every year. At least one fish from a boat on the bid route every consecutive month. Because with that journal, you know, we were able to kind of track things and he'd always show up at the fishing spot and say, okay, last May, here's what we used, here's what the CFS was, and here's what we need to use today. And so uh, as, as we looked back in time over the, the journals and we said, you know, it looks like we've actually got a streak going. And so then we started keeping track. actual 20-year encyclopedia basically on how to fish the Bitterroot River. It's pretty amazing. bad motherfucker that at one point in his life was an actual cowboy and did things like breaking horses. My dad, on the other hand, is more zen. He tries to be more relaxed, more chilled out in the morning when he gets there. Hey, you got one more minute. 
I'll give you ten. was sick. That was that fish that kicked my ass. The first fish out of the blocks of the year. The biggest challenge has, has just been in the last couple of years when Rick became ill with cancer and was going through chemo. And I'd been a month out of chemo and that 16 inch brown, brown yeah, rainbow right. on a San Juan worm. It was about a 40 second battle. I was having a tough time you know, getting out of his house, getting in the boat. It was, it was brutal, but through that entire ordeal, I fished in November with Chris. I fished in December with Chris through the chemo and the radiation. He just really had to force himself to get out. Let me row him all day, which is, you know, tough for him to do. He's just one of those guys where he wants to do all the rowing, let everybody else fish. And for a couple months there, or several months, he just couldn't do it. So it was my pleasure and honor to uh, row him down the river when he couldn't do it himself. Chris is running a boat, and I, my mouth is open for a reason. I'm gasping for air. I'm literally gasping for air after that fight. <laughs> so, uh, side bigger stronger and better you know that we're gonna be good brother I will take you home and dry your eyes brother I will warm your heart the river will be racing with what February, we had we had temperatures that were in the mid to upper 30s. We could have done it. We had prior commitments, so we couldn't do it. And then all of a sudden, the western version of the polar vortex set in with the this year has been cold. Dancing around the fire, carols on the radio. Drinking your hand, lips on my cheek. Feeling so jolly, but I'm stuck in the car Counting down the hours till you give me some of that Christmas magic Give me some of that I don't want to go over there That's too far This is our short shot Sorry, 
are you going to help us pack down the trail in here, Matt, with your rig? We're going to go around the circle a little sure. bit. Sure. We're going to mash this down a little bit. And then we can leave the truck and trailer or we can park right here. And I've got 80 feet of strap that we can winch up 20 foot increments to get it up here. Snow's going to stop at 11, allegedly. So. getting done this way. the same team man don't don't yell at me I'm trying to tell you listen to it crackle we figured out a hair brain idea for tomorrow kayaks or kick boats we can throw them in at Florence roll up because we just have to be there get to the spot via a boat I've got a fishing kayak Chris has got a kayak and a kick boat We'll go to that first ripple, and then we'll get the hell out of there. The snow is supposed to, believe it or not, it was stopped at 11 o'clock this morning. It was supposed to. It currently, I just snow blowed my driveway, and it's still coming down, but holy shit, this is incredible. Chris says, I'm bringing sandwiches. We're going to stand on that ripple Lately until we hook some fish. Streak has kept my dad riveted for many years, and you know it has caused some ups and downs between the two of us. But it's it's always been something that's kept him grounded. If they say yeah, lost all direction, you know. And it keeps him sane in a way because it's his way to to get an outlet to let go of some of his frustrations and get out back in the world where you know he's in charge and he has the options to do what he wants to do out there and he will always be my my best friend and my hero so i'm really proud of everything that he's done it's been a long i didn't dare get out that far with a net pretty deep right there. Had it probably gone over my waders, but, you know, God watches over small children and fools, I guess. It's almost, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Matt, you were the only truck unstuck out of the three, and you managed to get us all out of there. We wouldn't be here right now. We'd be doing AAA and getting that dog, those rigs out of there. If it seems I've lost connection, don't send letters and don't pick up the phone. If they say I lost oh, all direction, I want to cry, you know? I just want to cry. Did. Yeah, it's all right, will you did. take my rod? Because I'm going to hold that. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Hold my boat. No, it's a giant deal. I mean, oh, it, it's, yeah. I mean, like I said, we've worked, we've worked hard for fish before. We have never worked this hard for fish. And I, you know, it was, it was down to the 11th hour, <laughs> getting stuck yesterday for three hours and all this other stuff. And then we had the revelation of kayaks. Well, my brother had the, yeah, I've given my good. brother entire, that was good. That was good. he's got the royalties for the February <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The streak still continues. We're working on year 19 by heck, and it feels great. When it storms like crazy, yeah, you know how I get. But don't you worry when they all say that I left. 
Excellent. I don't know what you got there, but I'm letting you do it. Yeah, I've been working on it a little right, bit, thanks. but it's, it's way uh, beyond my pay grade. <laughs> yeah, that is. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. This is a nice cold beer. Oh, yeah, it is. Man, Rick, I don't know what I would do without you around. I would have just had warm ass beer the rest of the day, is what I would have. It's cold. Well, that's what Rick wondered regularly. Well, no, I don't wonder. Well, what gives you? Yeah. <laughs> How do you survive without it? <laughs> 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 It's spectacularly beautiful, for one thing. I mean, when you're floating down the Bittergroot, you cannot ask for more spectacular surroundings. Well, it's, it's our home river. We've been through lots of trials and tribulations, and this river has been kind of healing water for me. Our children all grew up here. Life has happened in the Bitterroot Valley for us. Um, that's why it's such a special place, all of those things. It's hard to put into words what the Bitterroot River means to our family. Um, we've had so many memories, so many days out there all together, um, watching the boys grow up, watching them learn from their dad how to fly fish, and how special that bonding was, and, and a lifetime of joy and memories for our family, getting out there on the water. and spending all that time together. You know, everybody talking about squall hatching. What, what are you talking about? In the first couple of times we went out, we didn't do squadooch on that. The squall hatch was akin to Sasquatch. And then all of a sudden, boom, the code got cracked in the day. And it was the Chernobyl ants, the big ones. They, I mean, they were huge. They were eating them things. Montana many years right, just due to the obstructions that appear and disappear. In May, you better get it done early or you better hope your runoff doesn't come off in a big sheet because you're going to be farm fishing. During runoff, I've seen the bank give out, 60-foot cottonwood fall over, and watched Rick calmly row around it. It's amazing how many different conditions these guys have found a way to catch a trout in. Yeah, he saw them. Yeah. He, oh, he bit the front bug. He did. He went after the He bit the golden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be some 20 inch cut for us. Come up and just open his yap, suck that golden down. Say we put him down. <laughs> there he is. That a boy. Hold on, next little cutthroat, huh? He ate the gold. Ate the gold. So you gotta let me know in case. You... Oh, there, there, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he still got the yolk sack I on him, but to... by God, it's just elm on it. You have to let me. And ate the golden too. Yeah, look at that thing. It's like as big as his head. My dad has always been the best dry fly fisherman that I think I've ever seen. 
it's not because he can cast 10 miles, it's because he sees fish incredibly well and he presents a fly even better. Banging the seat that time too. No, you were on. This might be a little bony here. Yeah. <laughs> Move it away from the net. Move it away from the net. time after all these adventures across Montana and all of the trout over the years there's no question that Rick is a part of our family and he always will be.